you're taking 50 percent that's one thing but if you're taking 80 and you're tilted that is the worst thing yeah definitely um like everything that you said is definitely true like this this um like i went on uh like a 45 minute set versus a rob and my mental game was insane like i had to keep myself calm the entire 10 games we went 10 games i it was it was crazy it was grand finals too but yeah at the end i kind of like i i i bursted into happy tears it was, it was, it was pretty crazy because the last game came down to last stock last hit so it's kind of crazy yeah uh ape and men not gonna be on the rob gonna be on the diddy and this is a bit of a more i think diddy definitely compliments ape and men not only as a rob main but also like as a co-main for diddy like this is two good characters to have in your toolkit for sure like if if you want to talk about having somebody to compliment your character in terms of matchups diddy is definitely one of the strong strong not if not strongest characters you can have as a co-main but uh dang man every diddy main will live and die by that side by that side b and right there you can tell syrup is keen to punish that with an up air and that'll take the stock yes diddy mains are strong uh, but right now uh syrup is doing pretty good staying at his one stock oh almost almost uh, losing his first stock there to the um the barrels Banana peel coming out. Ooh, Ape Man tried to read his, uh, like just running away with the up smash. Is he gonna pick up? Yes, he does pick up the banana with the down tilt. Does a nair to, uh, hit Ape Man and pick up banana. PK fire, another PK fire to a, uh, my bad, to a sending back here. And that up smash is gonna finish off Syrup's first stock. Yeah. I mean, Sarah has such a strong lead here that, like, for Ape and Man, I wouldn't necessarily take this as a as a hundred percent loss, but I would take this as okay. Now it's time for me to check my mindset and gather data and look at what I can start adapting from the last two stocks I have lost, and then grow from that. And then if I don't make it out here in this match, I can take that information into game two. That's the beauty about best of fives here. And you can even really tell, look at what Ape Man is doing. He has now essentially adapted to his opponent, which is Syrup. And like I said, even if he doesn't win, that adaptation will go a long way when it comes down to game two. And Ape Man is looking to at least take this one stock to put even stocks missed up smash, but I still commend the attempt. And there's the down tilt to up smash. It's good there because of the platform. And, a, and a, sometimes the common option is to directional air dodge towards the platform because you don't want to get in, set into a juggle situation. But unfortunately, your best option is to get away from the platform at all costs. I think about like game ones of every set as like, okay, what you got to do is after game one, you have to compute all the data, bring it all together and compute it like a computer slash robot and use that big brain of yours to think of a game plan to get the next um, match as, uh, to get the W for the next match. Yeah. Next oh. is in the air right there, the descending uh, air. And the, that's the thing about, but yeah, and the thing about Syrup there is he tossed Banana upwards. So in case Ape and Man wants to go for that high recovery, he had to evaluate Banana as something to stop him. But also if you want to go for normal neutral get up, jump get up, a side B, and arguably maybe roll get up, um, he would have gotten hit by Nair. And also if he doesn't time his get up attack in time, he will get hit by neutral air. So that was rough, but Mighty Man, this is what I talked about here. And this is the one thing I also love about Ape and Man as a player. You saw how what I said what was going on. Like he looked at his opponent, said, I lost the first two stocks this way. Let me adapt. And even if I lose, I will take the adaptation as far as possible to either get this game or not. And he had it. Literally, he if he got back on the stage. Sorry, there, there's like always like I, I I suffer for reference. I live in Little Tokyo and there's always like people 
with like really really nice cars i will add but everybody loves to rev the engine around my apartment so i apologize but i also wanted to have the window, window open to finish off that tangent really quick ape man took the adaptation and then essentially came back that was literally syrup's game it became syrup's no longer syrup's game to win but syrup's game to lose so now ape man has all that adaptation where do we see this adaptation here it's that first 52 percent he's already put up on syrup and the banana and the comeback on the stage this is what i like to see on ape man one thing that I also think is like you kind of want to stall as much as possible for game one so you can try to like make it last as long as possible so like you can try to get more data for the future matches and the more yeah. data you have the more you'll know about the, your opponent which will lead you into finding out a game plan and getting the W exactly now this time we see Ape Man going for the high side B avoiding that somewhat me medium height side of you because he knows that upper will be there to catch it look at ape man changing the recovery angles here getting see now that was good that get up attack i'm sorry that get up option there was the worst the easily the best worst thing that can happen because he's not losing the stock here but he immediately stood up here on 100 percent ape man's kind of like kind of slow the roll here take a little bit of a pace look at syrup's aggression of how he is and then try to catch him in an option there that's going to be a back throw but ape man is no slouch i like that doesn't panic saves the jump puts out the banana in play from the high and look at that coverage and the punish this is the real adaptation here and he knows where he has to barrel himself back to the ledge to get that ledge of invincibility but the problem there was unfortunately he kind of rolled back and that arc of the up smash is so good for ness i mean they are both at second stock right now and currently very even right now Ape it. right right now they're just going they just went back and forth with their combos but looks like syrup, syrup is uh racking up the damage more on ape it man as you can see, grabbing that banana in midair, throwing it forward, keeping it on the ledge. Now Ape Man has it just for us to disappear. Good dash attack, use of the dash attack. But um, another thing about this game is like, it's not all about reaction time. Like almost, I would say a good 75% of the game is mental, not reaction yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's about setups too. Like a player who knows, who like has been argued, like who doesn't have great reaction time is Mars. And even then, you don't have to have the world's greatest reaction time. It's kind of it's kind of a fallacy of being a pro level player. Reaction time isn't everything, but it's all about knowing what, how to set up things. That's the bigger play. And when I talk about that chess-like gameplay coming up from Ape Man, it's how he usually plays himself. He's kind of here on the Angel platform for a few seconds just because he wants to buy some time to think. And that's good. Not enough players actually do that. Take sometimes when you feel like you've taken too many stocks and you're, and you're a little bit you know maybe possibly on the verge of getting tilted take some time on the angel platform to think and evaluate even for just a few seconds there's a reason why there, there, there's a reason why your boy sakurai made the angel platform like yeah. and that reason is to give yourself at least like five seconds to think over okay what do i do now i just lost a sock yeah but also in, in, in any in any in a game like smash it, it's the balance of like cool you just lost the stock you don't have to lose the round basically like the round is within the stocks uh and that's the crazy thing about smash is unique here what a quick little juggle here quite a few uppers look at this damage 54 ape man on the aggressive side 70 all the way through but oh that pk fire slowly kind of breaking through at the ledge that's where ape man kind of has to start slowly accounting for is that pk fire from the ledge because if he's caught in the middle of an action, that PK fire will not only give Syrup the stage to come back to, but possibly the damage and, and even the stock at, at least. That was a sketchy down tilt. I'm sorry. That was all that was because like that up smash could have been released, but he barely caught it in the nick of time. Watch yourself on that side B. He's going to go for that low recovery. He'll be able to recover here, but he's got to watch up on that. Get up. The yo, yo. Wow. But uh, one thing I did also notice is that uh, Diddy Kong's air mobility is insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our, our, like, easily, for sure, one of the best characters in air mobility. And that's why I tell people, like, Rob's air mobility isn't that strong as a play as a character. But for Ape Man as a player, he knows, like, okay, where does Rob suffer? And where can I pick up Rob's weaknesses? He's in a character like Diddy. And you kind of see that. Even though Diddy doesn't have, like, an angled laser or, or a gyro, the constant threat of things like Pop Gun and Banana and the recovery and the side B and... The better combo game that's all in the package of diddy and then the mid-range long range 
you know, hit, hit and run options. That's all in the game plan of Rob. Those two characters kind of complement not only Ape Man as a player, but also Ape Man, you know, as the the person, I would say, for sure. But Syrup Man, he like I talked about how he's such a strong Ness main for sure. Like we have player people think about like Send for sure, formerly known as Best Ness. We have Lumbre here in SoCal. But that's the crazy thing is Syrup is definitely also like one of those top, top Ness mains out there. And he's definitely a name you should definitely feel when you see him in bracket. Going into game three now. Syrup up 2-0. And uh According to the predictions, uh, so far they're being correct, but you never know. Ape Man's Diddy Kong is very, very good, and he could reverse 3-0. Yeah, like, the thing for Ape Man, too, is that he's been able to... Like, I feel like this is going to be... Uh, this should be a game for Ape Man. Like, if you're telling me to bet Ape Man winning this game, I would bet him winning this game for sure. Because this is basically the, the adaptation coming full circle on King 3. But we'll see, man, because... The, the beauty about being a player and being a high level player is also looking at your opponent's adaptation and adjusting for it. We saw that empty have coming out from Syrup, so he could get that back throw. And that's the thing about Syrup here. Now he's adding an empty hops into the mix ups here. He is changing this recipe as it goes. We'll see how Ape Man could come back on the stage. Goes for the full barrel charts to kind of bypass the stage, and I like that. A little bit of a wait here from Ape Man just to wait for Syrup's options. But it's that PK fire we're seeing from the ledge, Mighty Man, that he has to really, really watch out for because it's been to a lot of Syrup's best options when he wants to stop Ape Man altogether. Ape Man right now is sitting at one fit. Both are at very high kill percent. So they, they both have to be very careful, but I am still I'm seeing less aggressive play and right there the dash attack is gonna finish off Ape and Man's first stock right there. Yeah. Man, that dash attack is just it's it's gruesome. Yeah. I argue that people has no business lasting as long as it does and being that disjointed, but I just tell people like people complain about the, the Fire Emblem characters having swords. Man, like it's like Ness has swords. In, in a funny way. Ness yeah. has swords, Mario has swords, DK's arms are swords, like, it's crazy. But, uh, well, swords aside, man, we're actually just seeing uh, magic powers and monkey fists being flown around, and Ape Man so far, a little bit of a lead in terms of percent here, but it's not that lead when he's off the stage. Like, th th this character, this char Ness himself, he's a very interesting character, having all these psychic abilities of, uh, you know, just using magic comes out right from his body, you know, like PK fire, you snap your fingers, fire appears, like kind of crazy, you know? Yeah, even his game is a pretty, is, is a wild ride. I always call it magic, but I know it's like psychokinesis or whatever you want to call it. I and mean, we get into the, the real technical terms of that some other times. But the crazy thing for sure is here, like, like I said, any betting man would say this is a game for Ape Man for sure. Because game three is, like I said, you usually where the adaptation comes full circle, but Syrup has adaptation of his own, and that's for Ape Man to fight all the way through. If I were Ape Man, this might be a game where I win as Diddy and I go back to Rob, but we'll see. Great DI from Ape Man it sets up that high banana. This gets him back on the stage. What a play here, because you know Ape Man knows how to make sure he comes back even against odds that look very difficult. Ooh, that forwarder coming out. Ooh, okay. Syrup using an air dodge to get back to stage, but I think he did a jump get up, and that uh, rising fair got him. Yeah, um, and that was good for Ape Man. Look at the coverage that he had. He went for a rising fair, but he had banana on the stage to cover that up in case Ness did land before that or went for a roll from the ledge. So you know Ape Man always it comes for those options. A little less time on the Angel platform because Ape Man knows, all right, let's put this game plan all into wraps here. Let's see if I can get this game here. Game three is very important because it's already a set point for Syrup. Ape Man, watch yourself on the... Okay, I was going to say, watch yourself on the monkey flip. Every Diddy lives and die by, dies by it. Yes, monkey flip. It's a good move. But it, it's very, uh, very, very dangerous. Uh, like, very risky move. Ooh, uh, what like a call said. out. He caught this man sort of pressing buttons right before he can even press them. And he knows, let's go on this aggressive forward air <laughs> train. I think Ape Man just found the best way to deal with this here. It's been constant forward airs. Call, because you know what? You have such good aerial movement with Diddy that you can call out Ness for that. And I think Ape Man is looking to put that adaptation piece into play. And maybe this will be the game for sure. 86%, 111. No grab, no down tilt. Ape Man just looking for center stage. Oh, good shield in the banana. 
just getting away from it. Oh, but he rolled right into that up smash. Dang. That's very unfortunate, but dang. Game 3 goes to Ape your man. boy Ape Man. And I'm telling like, you, okay. any any betting man would say, like, yeah, Ape Man takes Game 3. Why? Because he's been adapting for the last three games. Like, I, I would definitely say not that his adaptation, not that Syrup's adaptation isn't good. It's just Ape Man is that player that I can always see, like, cool. He, he, it's very rare that I see him get 3 0'd. I think Jake was the only player I saw him go 3 0'd. That was on Diddy. But, like, it, it, it's it's the thing of, like, Ape and Man, like, constantly adapting. And even in any player that is constantly adapting, even from game one to game two to game three, game three is normally the hardest part to win for a lot of players just because it's like, cool, this is my opponent's adaptation come full circle. So now I have to have more adaptation than my opponent. In, in where there is barely any any room for error because it's been going on for quite some time. So Ape Man being able to turn around full circle, get game three into game four. The real the real question is the game five possibility because now normally half the time is cool. You win one game, three out um, to one. The, out of the difficult part for you as a player is winning game four because that's when your opponent sees, looks back and sees all the adaptation, adaptation you've had for the past few games. And now he puts that against you. And we even saw that with Syrup last game when he started ab adding empty hops to his recipes. Yeah, I mean... Wait, j just to confirm, tomahawks and empty hops are the same thing, Same thing, right? yeah, yeah. I like to okay. call it empty hop just because, like, I'm... I'm, new, I'm I come from, like, a background of playing Street Fighter. I know Smash 4, we call the tomahawk raps. Game 3, we're going to... Smashville, which is interesting because it's the smallest map um, in the uh, no. Illegal. No, way. no, 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 Towards the end of him, uh, towards the end of the match, he's gonna be like, you know what? <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna flip a switch, and then he's gonna go like crazy. My boy's gonna go ham. Yeah, that's the thing about Ape Man too, is you also have to your opponent will account for that, especially if you're our setup. Like I said, game four is the hardest to win in, in reality, because this is when your opponent looks back at all the adaptations you've been making for the past two games, and they can easily make it up in one game because they've had room to lose basically. Um, Oh, tough one. Good DI here coming out of Man. Of course, the ceiling, you no, know, it's low, but you can have poor DI and you can lose your stock terribly for that. If, especially if you're holding no DI. I would smash will, call, will be the call there on the center platform. PK fire. This is the rough part for Ape Man, dude. It, it, it's getting hit that way. I'm getting back to stage. Right now, Ape Man is looking too hot right now. And as, as I say the word hot, PK fire comes out. And that disjointed dash attack, my goodness. Uh, finish off Ape Man's second stock. As you can see, Ape Man's starting to stall on an angel platform at least like a little bit. As you can see, like he doesn't immediately drop. Yeah. Back air? Oh no, that was close for now. I would have loved to have seen that back air just to get Syrup off the stage. One thing we haven't seen Ape Man go for is just to let go of... I think Ape Man's just been a little bit too aggressive at the ledge. And there are times where like, cool, set up Banana here, maybe go for Pop Gun, or then try to catch Syrup or trying to go for an aerial with your fair. And I think that's what I liked about Game 3 here. Ape Man definitely had that coast-to-coast -coast forward air train, as we see from Peely... Uh, I can't see his name on Twitch, but for sure it was somebody on the Twitch chat definitely mentioned that coast to coast fair and that was really big for ape man so we'll see that's a forward smash right before the starting frames of the of the pk fire and man this is this is rough because ape man had a lot of homework to turn in but the professor told him the grades has already been submitted come back next time sad but this is very this is a very sad moment for ape man can, can, can we just have a moment of silence for our boy Ape Man. <laughs>